Hey Thread family, I hope you're having a great one. I hope you and yours are well. And I'm so thankful we have this medium that allows us to spend some time together in God's Word. And today we're talking about Jesus' baptism and what happens immediately afterwards. And we're in the Gospel of Mark. And the Gospel of Mark begins with John the Baptist preparing the way for Jesus. He's calling people to repent of their sins, to be baptized for forgiveness. He's also telling them, hey, look, there's one coming after me that's far greater than I am. I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. And while I'm baptizing with just water, he's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. So all this is taking place, and Jesus shows up and says, Hey, John, baptize me. And John's like, You haven't sinned a day in your life. How am I going to baptize you? And I'm certainly not qualified to do so. And Jesus says, No, this is the way it's to be done. And we pick up the story in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 9. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. Picture the scene. John's baptizing all these folks in the Jordan, and he's telling them that there's one greater coming, and then the greater one shows up and says, Hey, baptize me. And John's like, I'm not qualified to do that. And Jesus says, No, this is the way it's to be done. This was a moment of inauguration, of launch. It's a launch party, the kickoff of the ministry that God had called Jesus to. For the last 30 years, he'd been in Nazareth, Galilee, and he'd been growing in wisdom and spirit and knowledge. and He'd been tending to his job and doing those things, but now was the time to embark on the ministry and the mission that his heavenly Father had sent him to earth to do. And it was a moment of identification, saying, this is the one, this is the guy that's gonna do for the world what the world could never do it for itself. It was a time of affirmation. We hear the, the voice from heaven, this is my son, you are my son my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. The heavenly father is telling Jesus, I'm with you, you're my guy, I love you, and you're gonna do for the world what it couldn't do for itself. And then it's also a time of equipping as we see the heavenly, the Holy Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And it's, it's significant that it's like a dove because a dove is a symbol of gentleness and peace. In other words, Jesus was going to conquer the world, but not by the world's standards, not by brute force. He was going to do it by amazing, redemptive love. He was going to save the world by loving it. That's pretty impressive. Oh, so cool. And all that's taking place. And then verse 12, take a look. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. And we read that verse and we're like, yep, that's just like the devil, Satan, the adversary, the evil one, the tempter. No sooner has this mission launched and this ministry gotten started when there's the devil trying to pull Jesus off the path. And there's some truth to that. I mean, we read in 1 Peter chapter 5 that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. That's true. But catch something significant at the beginning of verse 12. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Spirit? You mean the same spirit that just descended upon him like a dove is now sending him into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan? Yeah. And we think, how cruel, but not at all. That's not the case. It's to prepare Jesus for the walk he's about to walk, for the ministry he's about to embark on. His heavenly Father knows it's going to be a testing, and the Holy Spirit knows I've got to be prepare him for what lies ahead. It's going to the cross. It was always the cross. The cross was always the destination. And this is equipping Jesus for the walk that he's about to walk and the ministry that he's about to embark on. And that should be great comfort for us because we often go through trials. You may be in one right now. And we need to know that the trials and the testing are not meant to destroy us or to ruin us, but to strengthen us, to equip us for the next leg of the journey that God has prepared for us. He didn't want to destroy us. He wants to prepare us for what what lies ahead. That's great comfort. Think about a a football player, maybe a freshman on a on a team who shows up and shows great promise, and they're like, "Man, he's pretty good." Well, let's see what he's what he's capable of. Well, to do so, you don't put him up against the freshman team or the JV team. You put him up against the varsity, the best of the best, and see how he does. And that testing. That going up against those top-notch players is going to prepare him and equip him for the time when he's ready to step into that position. We need to know that when we go through testing, it's not meant to destroy us. It's meant to equip us and strengthen us for what God has on the other side of it. 
We're going to be uniquely qualified to minister to people in a unique way from that tr- for, because of that trial that we just went through. And here's something else cool. Check out the beginning of, of the Gospel of, G- of Mark. This is John the Baptist talking. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Talking about Jesus. In other words, when we trust in Jesus, when we surrender to him, when we repent of our sins and trust in him, he pours out that same Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that was poured out on Jesus at his baptism, his baptism is poured out on us. And we think, well, then if it's the same Holy Spirit, why are we not like Jesus? Sin, we have sin, Jesus doesn't. Sin separates us, distances us. But the more we can surrender and turn over and, and surrender our lives to Jesus and trust in the Holy Spirit, the further we can progress into what God is calling us to be ultimately. And he's equipping us to be bold witnesses for him on the other side of that testing. If you're in a trial right now, know it's not to destroy you, not to ruin you, but to strengthen you. And you're not going it alone. The Holy Spirit is with you and he will lead you and guide you as much as you'll let him, as much as you'll turn it over to him, let him lead it and guide it and trust in him and he'll show you the way and you will be a bold witness. Have a great one. God bless.